Back for the final 10 minutes of football. It's the 2015 Legends Cup. Mama Lynch. We got random drones. We got a bit of everything this afternoon. Wow, that was a drone. I thought it was some crazy bugs they have up here in Seattle. This crowd, one of the better atmospheres in all of the LFL. And Chicago has certainly taken witness to that this afternoon. Ball at the 18-yard line as Seattle goes back to work. That's Melee Gilmore in motion. They're going to fake it to Gilmore and give it to Schnorr. DeAndre Fry, one of the better tackling corners in the game, not fooled at all and giving up about 100 pounds to Schnorr. Great play by Fry. Sometimes Will beat skill. She comes off the edge. Just a little cornerback throws down Stevie Schnorr. That's what Chicago needs. Seattle better not get conservative right now. And I think that's what we're going to probably see here. They're going to run the ball. And if you're not familiar with LFL timing rules, outside of two minutes, it's a running clock. Obviously, that's going to greatly benefit Seattle. As Matheny comes back under center, just milking that play clock. Right side toss play this time to Stevie Schnorr. Neka Nawani, a little bit of frustration setting in with that Chicago defense. As Schnorr carries for three yards and sets up a huge fourth down. Everybody in the building knew Stevie Schnorr's getting the football. This does set up the play of the game for the Chicago defense. Somehow, you know Schnorr's probably going to get the ball. You got to put everybody going towards her. You got to anticipate Schnorr is going to get the ball, as you're saying and hit all these gaps. You need the ball back if you're Chicago. Fourth and two. This could be the ball game for Chicago. Matheny still milking that clock, trying to draw the defense. What a great open field tackle by Dominique Collins. And I'm not sure if Stevie Schnorr got there. Collins came off the edge exactly like she had to, but Schnorr's forward lean, it's gonna be close. They're saying no right now. Hey, I want a measure. Leave it alone. I want a measurement. I want a measurement. I want a measurement. Yeah, you can't fault Coach Michelson for wanting a measurement there. That is a huge down. And for them to not even measure it. My time for a measurement. I guess they're going to pull the sticks out now. Stewart needs to get to the 25. I don't think she made it on that replay. It looked like maybe her right elbow hit about the 24-yard line. That is a good spot. And a huge turnover. And now it looks like Seattle's challenging it. I don't know how you challenge a spot. I guess you could relook at the replay here. Seattle is challenging the ruling on the field for the spot short of the line of the game. I thought that was a pretty good spot. You could see, watch the right elbow of Stevie Schnorr hit about the 24. Check that, the left elbow. And that is where she's down. That is a great spot. They're not going to overturn this. She's definitely not at the 25-yard line. The ball never got there. No matter where the elbows are, the ball never got to the 25-yard line. That's not even close. That's not even close. They got a great spot. <laughs> now you need to back it up. You need to back it up more. Head referee Michael Livingston ready to give us the call. This will be big no matter which way it goes. After further review, the runner was down short of the line of the game. Therefore, it will be first down Chicago. Seattle will be charged their first timeout of the half. The thousands of fans inside the Shower Center do not agree, but it was absolutely the right call. You got damn right we need to stop. We need to fucking move the ball in offense. I know. Said it. Coach Michelson upset. I don't think that was the right call by him challenging that call. Now he's out of challenges for the whole second half. A first and ten play looking down the field. Fur has Alberts. And Alberts, a big drop in the end zone. Chicago desperately needed that. God damn, our corners are suspects. You really got to wonder why Chicago didn't throw the football like this in the first half. Great play action pass by Heather Furr right on the money. Allie Alberts never drops balls like that. She's an all fantasy wide receiver, but great call by Chicago. Second and 10 now 
Chicago having to go to the pass. Fur just does not have any time under heavy pressure. That time, Megan Hansen and Danica Brace. Great block destruction by Megan Hansen. Got to Fur. Nothing there. She just tried to fire it out to nobody. The play before should have been six points, though. That would have been a huge turn. Here it is. Great pressure. Megan Hansen all over Fur. Nowhere to go. Ever since Christelle Harris has been taken out of the equation, all Seattle's done is pin their ears back, and they're getting after Fur. They know it. That's the only shot Chicago has is to throw the football now. The crowd coming to life here in Seattle. And that's a reverse pass play. Allie Alberts finding Jamie Fornell. And just like that, the entire perspective of this game changes. This was nowhere to be found in the first half. A reverse pass. Allie Alberts can throw the football. She's the backup quarterback. What shocked me is Seattle let Fornell get behind the entire secondary knowing they have to score three times. What a play by the Chicago Blitz. Now a 13-point game, so an all-important extra point. That's Heather Fur getting it in. MVP, MVP, what happened? What happened? Heather Fur having a little fun. You guys, how bad do you want this shit? And you can see. There is a little bit of worry now. You do not want to give life or awake the sleeping giant. You knew the chance we're going to make a run. They're doing it late in the game, but they're only down 12 points, and there's still almost seven minutes left. Very important drive here for Seattle to control the clock. If they go four and out, it really sets the stage for Chicago. A real concern, K.K. Matheny, look at those eyes now. First and 10, ball at the 15-yard line. They've got Stevie Schnorr in tailback. They're going to hand it off to Melee Gilmore. And Gilmore moving the pile. A carry of six yards for Melee Gilmore. You really got to hand it to that Seattle offensive front led by Jenna White, Danica Brace, LaShonda Fowler. Watch the blocking right there. That's what they have to do to grind the clock down. If they play like that, this game's going to be over quick. And I like how Melee Gilmore continues to pump those legs. Very Roger Craig-esque. I'm sure we lost half the audience. That is an older player that used to play with the San Francisco 49ers was a hell of a running back. You almost lost me. I almost didn't remember that name. Now a second and four. Ball at the 21, and you can see Seattle just milking the clock. They're going to have an inside handoff play here to Danica Brace. Brace will be limited to three yards. That was Heather Furr on the stop. They finally got the urgency back. That's what they should have done in the first fucking half. This is the Chicago team that won two championships. They show up with five minutes left in the game. Unbelievable. Third and one play now. And I think you've got to go back to the bull here, Stevie Schnorr, and work on this clock as Chicago's only down two scores. And they still have two of their timeouts remaining. You can see Heather Fur wanting to shoot that gap. Neka Nawani, Yashi Rice. Playcock getting down to about the four, three, two, one second mark. And that's Stevie Schnorr. She may have enough to move the sticks. They're going to give her the first down. That is a big first down for this Seattle offense. Stevie Schnorr never assumes the play is over. That's why she gets the football in every situation like this. She will get the needed yards any time of the game. First and 10, ball at the Chicago 24. I don't anticipate any more passing from K.K. Matheny. I think we're going to get a healthy dose of LaShonda Fowler, Stevie Schnorr, and Danica Brace. Chicago needs one stop. This is it. This is the whole season. They have to stop Seattle now. First and 10 play. They're going to fake the handoff, and they're actually going to throw the ball. No, this is K.K. Matheny. Smartly taking a slide and avoiding the big hit of Chantel Taylor. Bootlegs consume a lot of time. That's actually a great play call. The only way you would throw it is if somebody's wide open. If nobody's wide open, you tuck it like that and take time off the clock. Time out. Chicago. 
Chicago their first of the half. Chicago electing to use one of their two timeouts. Let's listen in. All right, listen, listen, we're gonna get a stop here. We're gonna have to go offense very fast and start them. We're gonna get the outside kick, get the ball back, win this fucking game. All right, get a stop here. Coach Hack made it sound very simple there. That's the only shot they have. KK Matheny, really smart. She tries to get down before she goes out of bounds to keep the clock running. Unfortunately, came up a little bit short, but smart play. Chantel Taylor pushing Matheny out of bounds. Heather Fur knowing exactly what needs to be done will make for a very interesting final four minutes of football at the 2015 Legends Cup. Chicago going for a historic three-peat while Seattle trying to capture the franchise's first ever championship. It's going to be interesting if they're going to keep the ball on the ground or throw it with this wide open offense they have. Second and eight. Ball at the 18-yard line. Matheny looking down the field, now going to take off with it again. Gets pinned against the boards by Heather Furr. Matheny will gain four yards. Pretty sure she had that same pass run option. If somebody was wide open, throw it. If not, literally run down the field, then a quarterback draw action, try to get the first. Now Chicago electing to call their second and final timeout as they prepare a late stage rally. Back to Seattle, Washington. A special Legends Cup edition of LFL Football Night. Mitch Mortaza alongside Bobby Huco and Audra Marie Walterhouse in a game that is going down to the wire. Seattle has the most wide open offense in the league. These are key plays, these third and fourth situations. They have the playbook to get it. Let's see what they go to. Ball at the 18-yard line. Schnorr, the sole running back. As Matheny looks over the defense, toss left play to Schnorr, barreling over DeAndre Fry. And that should be enough for a Seattle first down. That looks like a basic toss, but that is how you game plan a championship football game. You have Stevie Schnorr, the beast, the bull in the backfield, going one-on-one -on -one against DeAndre Fry, 5'5", 120. Who's gonna win that matchup? You can see Stevie Schnorr is absolutely on fire tonight. We will measure. They will measure to see if she got the first down. She thinks she got a poor spot here. Let's see where she gets pushed out of bounds by Fry. That looks to be right at the stick. She was involved in a goal line situation earlier where they said she didn't get it. They're going to even it out and give her the first down. I didn't think it was that close. I thought she easily had it, but on the mark, it was really close. Ball now to the Chicago 13-yard line. And this is starting to look more and more like a Seattle championship, and wouldn't that turn this league upside down? This would. It would be the first time ever for quarterback K.K. Matheny and coach Chris Michelson. They've been playing great football their entire careers, but this could be the night. First and 10 play, Melee Gilmore in motion. Big time pressure off the edge. And look at KK Matheny evading the rush, completing it to Danica Brace, and she may have lost the ball. Jenna Weiss recovering. Really surprised that Seattle put the football up in the air. There's only three minutes left in the game. You have Stevie Schnorr in the background, and you get in trouble with things like this. She's in trouble, she just unloads it. Looks like the ball gets out. Luckily, she was down. DeAndre Fry had an absolute beeline to KK Matheny and just could not wrap her up. The only real shot Chicago has is for a turnover. That's why I was really shocked they put the ball up in the air. One of the more evasive quarterbacks, KK Matheny, I don't know how many times she's extended plays with her feet. All year long. Matheny under center now, handoff. Looked to be a little miscommunication as Matheny was opening up left and Schnorr was going right. She totally thought Schnorr was going to do a dive left and found her to the right again. You can't have mistakes like that this late in a championship ball game. And that last play should get us down to the two-minute mark of the fourth quarter 
as KK Matheny and Coach Chris Michelson talk it over. This is the two minute warning. That officially Michael brings us stop. to the two minute warning as the Seattle Mist are at the doorstep of a possible championship. No shit, God, you guys play like a bunch of fucking girls. Is that what you want to hear? Let's go! Hit somebody! You would not know Coach Michelson is up two scores with two minutes remaining. He can taste the win at this point. He knows, though, two minutes in LFL football is a long time because inside of four minutes, if you score, you're allowed to try onside kicks. Look, he doesn't know what's going on right now. And now we're officially also at the two-minute stoppage rules, which means every incomplete pass will stop the clock. So Chicago does have that at their favor as Seattle goes back to work from the 12-yard line. Matheny looking over that defense. Toss left to the bull, Stevie Schnorr. Schnorr gaining three yards on that carry, and more importantly, the clock continues to run. We are under two minutes remaining. And this is where Seattle's got to hold on to the ball. Absolutely. Stevie Storr, she usually gets at least five yards. She's cut short right there. Ali Albert's a great play. Now Seattle, I think, has to throw the football. Fourth and six, you can't rely on Stevie Storr. You have to come up with some kind of pass to get the given yardage for the first down. Here we go, here we go, here we go. We're running the clock all the way down, and I'm going to call a timeout. So I'm not going to break the huddle. I understand, I'm not gonna break the huddle. That was a little earlier exchange with Coach Chris Michelson telling her to stay in the huddle. Seattle rightfully here calling a timeout to get the right play in place. This is the play of the year for both teams. I can't wait to see this. All right, let's get a stop. Complete sellout. I don't care what happens, everybody sell out on this, all right? Chicago has their scheme. If you'd have been there, she couldn't have thrown the ball. And Melee, like, why are we fucking fighting on some dumb shit? Hope you practice, hope you practice your onside kick. A very calm atmosphere with Chicago. You would expect a little more intensity, a little more urgency, but it almost seems comical. It's surprising because Coach Hack is one of the most intense coaches in the league. He knows he needs two scores. Maybe he just thinks it's unaccomplishable. I don't know. I'm with you. He looks a little yeah. bit. Yeah, it almost feels like he's accepted the fate of a loss. You don't have that fire. You don't have that urgency that you get from a team that's on the verge of potentially winning its third championship. Agreed. Although he did say, I hope you practice your onside kick. Fourth and six, the play of the season. And that looked like Melee Gilmore at the top of the screen. This will back Seattle up another five yards. Offense, number 14, five yard penalty, still fourth down. I don't think Coach Chris Michelson will be sending Melee Gilmore a Christmas present this year. He has got to be going nuts right now. One of the most important plays of the year, and you don't watch the football, you go before the ball snap. Unacceptable. That'll back the ball up to the Chicago 14-yard line. Fourth and 11, a definite passing down now. Stevie Schnorr flanking KK Matheny, going out into the flat. They're going to try the end zone. That was intended for Bren Renda. God damn it! God damn it, guys! Matheny has oh, Bren Renda. Oh, my God. You guys do not want to end this. I totally feel Coach Michelson's frustration. This was wide open. The ball seemed to float on Matheny. She was there. She puts a little door up on the ball. It's a touchdown. This game is over. She gave Chicago hope. Unbelievable. Now let's do the math on this, Bobby. We've got about a minute of football left. And we've got a 12-point ball game. That is two scores. <laughs> Chicago does not have a timeout. They're going to go down the field right away, wide open. Christelle Harris getting behind the defense. That is exactly what you cannot afford to happen if you are Seattle. Trip set to the right, just a streak route. Nobody covered Christelle Harris. Wow. And now Chicago lining up toss play to Harris. Harris has an opening. 
and cannot get into the end zone. I'm not sure if she even got out of bounds. That clock continues to run. This is it right here. If you're Chicago, you have got to get to the end zone or kill the clock. Why are they huddling? And there's the quarterback sneak play. That will give them a score. A little over 20 seconds remaining. Chicago, the extra point is really irrelevant. Outside, defense, number eight. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. So Chicago now within one score. Nice bull rush up the middle by Heather Furr. We've seen that play all season, all year long, and she's pushed in by Chris Del Ferrari Harris. I'm just wondering where this offense has been the whole game. They open it up and they go right down the football field. They wait until the fourth quarter. If Harris gets up and runs to the end zone, that saved at least 40 seconds on the clock, too. Now they're down to 20 seconds. And then they huddled right before that play. That cost them another five to 10 seconds. Here's the extra point attempt. That looked like Harris got an early start for Chicago. Yeah, they definitely got Christelle Harris early on that. 20 seconds, still time to go for an onside kick here after this extra point attempt. They can definitely do it. You saw one play a bomb to Christelle Harris there right on the goal line. All of the seven is the crowd again coming to life. As a receiver, Nekinawani just overthrew her. So this will remain a six-point ball game. Nekinawani, she needs to be coached up a little bit on the receiving technique. Again, she stopped running. She was open. Fur put the ball where it needed to be, but Nawani stopped running. Now Chicago will attempt the onside kick. Dominique Collins, the Chicago kicker, has practiced this. And Seattle has their hands team in. Here comes the kick and the play of the year for Chicago. That is Melee Gilmore. And you got to get down if you're Melee Gilmore. Seattle will take over on downs and move on as your 2015 Legends Cup champion. You don't know how good that play was by Melee Gilmore. Like a shortstop. Wow. Oh, well. We didn't play well enough in the first half. And what a season this has been for the Seattle Mist. We talked about all the veterans that came together. How special is this going to be for Jenna Weiss, Bren Renda, KK Matheny, Danica Brace, Jessica Hopkins, LaShonda Fowler. They have never been on the stage. And now they are 2015 Legends Cup champion. The Seattle missed in this place's rocket partner. Seattle is finally getting their due. Chris Michelson, how long has he been on the doorstep trying to get the championship? Finally, he has it. You can see the emotion just taking over Stevie Schnorr. And for Chicago, what a disappointment after two championships to be on the doorstep of a three-peat and have this happen. In essence, mailing in an entire half of football in the Legends Cup. That was the problem. They didn't show up until the fourth quarter. Allie Alberts, what a year. All these players played so good. The problem is nobody will remember who finished in second this year except for the players who finished in second. Heather Furr, a frustrating night, the complete opposite for that young lady. This is what I came here for. I love you. This is what I came here for. This is what I came here for. This is what you wanted. Let's just take this moment in. I'm going to head down to the field, partner. And we're going to give the trophy to the Seattle Miss when we come back. Welcome back to the Showwear Center, where the Seattle Miss became this year's Legend Cup champions. We're going to go down in the field with my partner, Mitch Mortaza. Hey, Seattle, six years in the making, huh? Thank you for supporting this team through everything. They haven't always won on the field, but they fought. And tonight, they beat a pretty damn good team. Let's give a round of applause to the Chicago Bulls and the amazing run that they had. Now, let's bring over here Coach Michelson, who I met back in 2007. And this man has won 
What a special night. What a great season. Congratulations to the 2015 Legends Cup champions, the Seattle Mist. For my partner, Mitch Mortaza, Audra Marie Walterhouse, producer Connor Schofield, this is Bob Yuko. We'll see you in 2016. Good night.